Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Iris Academy. We are playing Magical Diary Wolf Hall. And this week is going to be election week, I believe. Starting Monday, October 7th. I awaken on Monday to a knock on the door. Mr. Wynn? I step outside to find Professor Potsdam smiling at me. Good morning, dear. These are for you. She hands me a folder bulging with papers. The label on it reads Election Protocol. Have a look through them. Then meet me after class today to discuss your campaign strategy. Wouldn't it have made more sense to give these to me on Friday so I could study them over the weekend? A leader must be swift and decisive. You don't always get to plan ahead. Until then, toodaloo. She winks at me and sweeps away. Well, before anything else, I need to decide on my schedule for the week. Um, so firstly, we're gonna... We're gonna... Uh, gym. Then we're gonna... Blue magic all the way. Uh, we should probably rest and then do blue magic all the way. Exercising. We failed. Uh, can we scroll back to our... Um, no, we can't. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> so I'm going to meet up with William. Hey, Charles. The main thing you need to do today are to pick your campaign theme or slogan and to decide how you're going to spend your budget. Then tomorrow, and for the rest of the week, you have to attract as much attention as possible to yourself. If you look like a leader, a lot of people will believe that you are one. So, themes. Most people go, some people go with joke campaigns, puns and silly names and things they think will be memorable. A guy ran as a grocery list once. Buy milk, buy bread, buy cheese, vote Fred. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, sorry about that, right click, my damn finger is um, prone to clicking onto the, uh, the menu button. It's better to associate yourself with a powerful mental image, even if it doesn't connect to your name. Dragons are always popular, but that's kind of cliche. It'll do, but you could do better. A creature from your own homeland would work better, if it's something people would recognize. I don't want to be too specific about my identity, but a golden eagle might be an appropriate way to symbolize my heritage. Americans like eagles too, don't they? The other thing you have to do today is order your campaign materials. I hope you've saved us some allowance because funds are required to come from the candidate's own pocket. However, since the time frame for the election is so short, the school will provide the materials to order. So you won't have to stay up all night with markers and scissors. Now, you absolutely want at least posters or badges. That's the basics. That shows everyone who's running. Badges are probably better. People find it fun to collect them, so they'll naturally help spread them around. You can give away food, everyone likes free food, but when it's gone, they may not even remember who gave it to them. Upperclassmen have the option of buying up custom-made treats marked with their slogan, but freshmen can't afford it. You've got to be... You've got a tough challenge ahead of you to beat Minnie. She's every... She... So take every book... Every boost you can get. But if you're going to be a leader, you need to make the final decisions yourself. Good luck. He leads me to make my way to my meeting with Professor Potsdam. Alright, so, we are going to take the advance here. And, um, we are going to call ourselves the Golden Eagle. I think. The Wolf King is also pretty cool. Um, but that's too royal. So I'm going to go the Golden Eagle. Very majestic. Though some might wonder why when you are not a falcon. The eagle is stronger than the falcon. It's the best of both falls. You need to decide how to spend your campaign budget. Now, candidates are restricted to using their own spending funds to... Spending money to fund their campaigns. However, your parents have requested a special arrangement. Oh. If you take an advance against your weekly allowance, you'll have a full $100 to spend on campaign supplies. Isn't that cheating? Oh, oh no dear, it's just a clever application of the rules. The funds are still coming from your school spending money, so you won't receive any allowance for all those future weeks. Any student who thought of it could have made the request. But I didn't think of it, my parents did. William said I need to take every advantage I could get, so I'm going to take it. Alright, I'll do it. Well then, what would you like to order? I'm sure you'll want posters and paper badges for your supporters to wear, them. they are very popular. We have some supplies in stock, and I can fetch a few other things from off-campus if you need them. Uh, we're gonna get everything. Posters. 
paper badges, standard cupcakes, and customized cupcakes. Alright, I'll have those supplies delivered to you to your room in the morning. Good luck. Alright. This morning marks the beginning of the highly abbreviated Student Council campaign season. The campaign materials have been delivered to my door bright and early. I have a stack of six posters, each one saying the Golden Eagle for President. Vote Charles Wynn. There are six, so I suppose I should put each one, one up in each hall. For now I tape the Walpole copy across my door. I have a few dozen cupcakes. They're chocolate cake with a filling of gooey chocolate orange, iced with a mirror glaze and then my name carefully hand piped on top. Looking at these I can see why the costume option was so expensive. I also have some ordinary chocolate chip cupcakes with Wolf Hall orange frosting to round out the offering. Someone who only gets a lesser cupcake might feel let down, but that might also make people more eager to fight for the better cupcakes. Excitement is good. <laughs> people fighting over cupcakes, amazing. Cupcakes aren't really a breakfast food, so I stash them in my room to hand out after class. I have some badges made out of gold paper in the shape of an eagle with wings spread. Written on each one in black ink, Charles Wynn for President. There's also a little box of straight pins to attach the badge to robes. I need to go out somewhere with a lot of people so I can give these away. I knock on Donald Luke's door. Ready to fight the good fight? You bet! Are you sure you want me along? You know a lot about attracting attention. Just don't set anyone's hair on fire. Of course not. I already did that one. Logan's helping Jacob with his campaign, so he can't join us yet. But Jacob's going for treasurer, not president. So we're not rivals and we can still stand together. Good to know. Now let's go. <laughs> Alright. Next hour, with our hallmates, we are passing out badges. No time for serious conversation. Um... There's a lot of people here. A lot of people that we don't recognise. And we don't recognise all the candidates. Especially the upperclassmen. But there is Logan. Uh, he's using Fireball symbol. There is Minnie of course, surrounded by well-wishers. And nearly bouncing on her toes from excitement. Each student that she speaks to walks away with a yellow paper hand pin to her robes. Uh, what is that? A yellow paper hand pinned. Okay, not a yellow paper hand. It's a yellow paper that has been hand pinned. Wait, what? No, that doesn't make sense. Maybe it is a yellow hand. Anyway. Well, I can't concern myself with her. I have a job to do. This is a good way to get my name out there, but it is tiring and it is boring. Sleeping, lost stress, cool. Afternoon, grounds. Uh, let's see. I arranged the cupcakes in an artistic manner and prepared to smile and wave. A number of upperclassmen cluster curiously around to see my fancy cupcakes, but I wave them away, proclaiming the best treats to be for freshmen only. This gets me approving smiles from my own classmates. Everyone likes to be special. If yesterday's campaigning was dull in the distant roar, today is more like standing directly under a waterfall. All over the main quad, students have taken up positions, shouting slogans and pressing colourful pieces of paper onto anyone who passes. Every year has multiple positions up for vote, multiple candidates for each position, and multiple supporters for each candidate. Those who can are spraying magical sparkles or calling down beams of light around themselves to attract extra attention. Custom appears to prevent them from using spells to amplify their voices, at least, or we would all be deaf. Instead, everyone shouts messages as best they can. Taste the victory! Angela for president! Kerrigan for secretary! The strength of the oak! Vote for Jacob! The blazing fire! Follow the guiding light! Vote Brea Lynn! Vote for Charles Wynn, the golden eagle! William is at my side, so... With so many of my badges pinned... <laughs> he has so many of my badges pinned to his cape that it looks like some sort of patterned shell. He chants along with me, smiling and waving at everyone who passes. The freshmen are always look pleased when he catches their eyes. Male or female, a lot of people admire him. I do my best to greet as many people by name as I can. Will it be enough? Well, we'll find out soon enough. On Wednesday, Blue Magic Class. Another day, another morning of smiling and waving trying to look my best. This time, I'm on my own. It wasn't, ex it wasn't fair to expect other people to get up every early, uh, early every morning when, things weren't, when they weren't even candidates. Remember to read, Charles, remember to read. <laughs> Don't just run your mouth. But I won't give up. I'm going to fight this thing through to the finish. And then I hope I'll sleep. 
Across the quad, I can see Minnie, my opponent, cheerfully engaging with the crowd, with one exception, Barbara Salt Morrow, the quiet girl from Snake Hall. They're too far away for me to hear what they're saying, but I can see Minnie offering a hand to Barbara, and the other girl jerking away. Barbara throws her arms out behind her, her hands curling like claws, her teeth bared. Minnie looks startled and slowly backs away. I guess she's even more tired of these campaigns than we are. Good old Barbara. In the morning, I'm trying to practice my campaign speech when someone knocks on my door. Is that William? I open the door, and it- Min- Minnie? Uh, hi Charles, can we talk? Uh, sure. In private? What's going on here? I don't know, but I can't think of any reason to turn her down. We are rivals at the moment, but it's not like she's going to slit my throat and hide my body under my dorm bed. I beck near into my room, hoping it's sufficiently tidy. She taps inside and smiles at me. First, I want to congratulate you on running a, such a strong campaign. You've made a real impression in a very short time. I thought the congratulate your rival speech was something Americans did after the final results. Well, in this case, it's important I do it now. You and I, we're very different. We bring contrasting styles and experiences in pursuit of the same goal. You're a wolf, I'm a butterfly. You're the mysterious foreigner and I'm the girl next door. You look at ease in a party or a sports game and I'm happier doing hard work in the library. That's not exactly a compliment. But despite our differences, we both really want this position. I can't tell how important this is. I can't tell you how important this is, how much this means to me. There's so much I want to do, especially for the freshmen. Especially for the Wild Seeds. We need class-wide events early in the year, not just parties to talk about our customs and how they differ. Right now, the newcomers don't even understand how much they don't know. They just feel lost. I realise that being president matters to you too. I don't have to know your reason to see that you're trying. As I've said, we're very different. Yin and Yang. Two halves of the whole. I think we each have about half the class behind us. But do you see what that means? Whichever one of us wins, the other loses, and half the class loses too. So why don't we change the rules? What do you have in mind? When we go up to give our speeches, we announce that we have reached an agreement. Co-president. Can we even do that? I haven't found any school rule that says we can't. Think about it. You win and I win too. We can work together. It'll be easier than having someone to plan with. Yeah, but what if we don't agree? Then we'll just have to convince each other. Not easy. With two people each insisting they're equally in charge, we could be locked in constant stalemate. But that's only if we have completely opposite goals, otherwise it should be possible to compromise. If she's still offering me a deal, it means that she's afraid she'll lose on her own. I could win. I of course I'm going to agree to this deal! What the heck? Alright, I can go with that. I offer my hand to shake. Great! I'll meet you after class with a new speech. I wrote one for both of us just in case. She pumps my hand vigorously, and then hurries out the room. This should be an election to remember. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, blue magic class, success. Uh, afternoon Friday. Alright, this is it. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. After activities on Friday, each class has a scheduled time to come to the gym, where the, uh, where the officer candidates will make their final speeches before elections. We aren't allowed to vote in the elections for higher classes, nor they in ours. Each class is meant to function as a separate unit. In theory, we know our own members best, and we know what we want as a group. Therefore, we are not required to attend the speeches for the other classes. The freshman slot is the last one in the day. The candidates for president speak first, then the treasurers afterwards. It seems backwards to me, but I don't make the rules. Since Minnie was originally scheduled to speak first, she steps up onto the stage ahead of me, and I wait for her announcement. While we made an agreement, we did not swear a, a formal wizard's oath to it. If she were heartless, she could go back on our plan and stop, uh, and hope that the surprise threw me off my feet enough to ruin my speech. However, that small chance against the greater risk of ruining her reputation? It doesn't seem likely. Good afternoon, all of you. My name is Minnie Cochran, and I'm running for freshman class president. Like all of you, I am at the beginning of my magical career. We are all just beginning to stretch our wings. These four years in Iris Academy will shape our futures. We will develop. We will grow stronger. We will find out what we're made of. But there is one thing that we already know. 
We are stronger together than we are apart. We're only freshmen. We don't know everything yet. We have to pull our strengths to cover our weaknesses. When we do that, we can change the world. In that spirit of cooperation, my opponent and I have made an agreement which will reshape the future of Iris Academy. Charles? To a chorus of confused mo- Oh, <laughs> I'm getting excited already. I step up onto the stage. Hi, my name is Charles Wynn and I am running for class president. Like my opponent, I want to represent you on the student council to help organize events and promote our class throughout the year. That's what we both want, to help. So what reason is there for us to compete against each other? And so, we are now running a joint campaign. Whichever one of us you vote for, we will both do the job, together. As she suggested, we each take each other's hand and hold them up in a show of common cause. Vote for the spirit of teamwork. As we step down together to scattered applause. My, wasn't that exciting? What a coup! It sounds like she's going to allow it. After that comes the speeches from the candidates for treasurer. Jacob is running as the blazing fire. Ah, blazing. Blazing. I see it now. He gives a surprisingly short speech, largely boasting because of because his family is wealthy, he can be trusted to handle money effectively. But everyone claps at great volume. I even hear someone shouting woo nearby. I suppose this audience would have been even more impressed by my heritage if they'd known it. The next speaker is Manuel Arias from Toad Hall. Ah, oh, Manuel. His speech is so quiet that it's hard for me to make sense of all the words, especially his accent. I believe it was about being a hard worker who never shirks his duty. There is applause, but not much excitement. And then it's time for the official voting process. At Professor Potsdam's direction, we line up single file in the hallway, one at a time. Students are allowed into the room to cast their votes. Each student is given a pencil and a slip of paper with the names of the candidates for each office. We are directed to the circle the name we wish to vote for, fold the paper in half and push it through a tiny slot in a box. For president, I circle both names together. It really doesn't matter. I was about to say, this could also be like the final trick because it's the vote that matters really. So if it, like let's say it was a 50-50 even split and it was only one vote, she could technically vote for herself and pull the rug out from underneath my feet. <laughs> <laughs> that would be... <laughs> that would be hilarious and cruel. For Treasurer, I will vote for... I'm going to vote for Jacob. We voted for Manuel last time. And even though I like Manuel, I think Jacob needs, needs a chance to shine this time, in this timeline. Alright, after all the votes are counted for, we assemble again in the gym for the results. The position of Freshman Class Treasurer will be held by Jacob Blazing. And I'm proud to announce that this year's freshman class president will be shared between Minnie Cochran and Charles Wynn. <laughs> we did it. They've accepted it. We're both president. But I wonder who'd have won if we'd played out the votes. I'd like to thank you all for your hard work this week. Your students are what makes Iris Academy truly great. The teachers need to speak to the newly elected officers afterwards to discuss their positions. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. As the other students disperse, Professor Potsdam takes Minnie and me aside. Well, what a lovely braid the two of you have woven together. So many clever exceptions and interpretations. So many? Oh, you'd have to ask Charles. Is she talking about the advanced payment option my parents arranged? I do hope you prepare to deal with the consequences. You are both clever and determined young people and you'll have no one but yourselves to mediate your disagreement. It could cause a bit of commotion while you try to outwit each other. Charles isn't my enemy. I'm sure we'll be fine. I don't particularly have an agenda here, so I don't see how she would get in my way. <laughs> That's true. I don't have a political agenda, so nobody can interfere. <laughs> well then, shall we talk about your duties? Yes, I'd like to arrange a class assembly as soon as possible. If you can tell me the most convenient time for everyone, what sort of assembly, dear? Oh, just an organised get-to-know-each-other session. We were introduced during orientation, but we haven't at, but we haven't all had time to talk. Many of the Wild Seed students still don't know who is who. It puts them at a disadvantage to the magic board. I thought we could start by... Uh, ooh. Um, by talking about customs and traditions they might not have heard of, like Saining or the Three Kindred. Saining, a blessed ritual performed over, mag over a magical child after he reaches the age of one year, 
and one day, and is therefore considered to be self-aware. At the staining, friends and family gather and welcome the new child into the magical community with gifts and song. Oh, that is an um, that is very cool. I might, honestly, I might steal this for my Dungeons and Dragons setting. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is amazing. I love that. And the three kindred. Uh, we know what the three kindred is. There is one for the um, the earth. Uh, Earth Ancestor and Spirit. And if you um, make an oath to them, then that is serious business. And with the Dark Dance coming up this month, we can explain how it's celebrated and the proper... Oh, no, 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 that won't do at all. I'm afraid I can't allow it. What? My dear Cherub, every, every fledgling's journey is different. They must each find their own path. If you order them all to fly in one straight line, they will lose opportunity to discover for themselves. But if they don't know, they must learn to ask questions. If any little bird approaches you and asks for your information, then of course you can answer. But you must not gather them up and lecture them. It is forbidden. Do you understand me? Yes, ma'am. After all, I think I'll single out the poor sapling. Think out. <coughs> Excuse me. After all, think about how singled out the poor saplings would feel. It wouldn't be kind. You wouldn't want the whole class talking about how different you are, would you, Charles? I don't think your parents would like that. Uh, no, ma'am. There, you see? And you wouldn't like to upset the parent... The parents, would you, Minnie? No, ma'am. Then that's settled. I think that's enough for today, don't you? Well, we'll meet again to discuss the preparations for the Dark Dance. But you are welcome to stay and get to know each other better. Just what is she suggesting? She sweeps out of the room and Minnie clenches her fist, breathing out harshly through her nose. What's the matter? We need to understand each other. Hey, you look upset. What's wrong? Nothing, you wouldn't understand. Not if you don't tell me. I said it's nothing. With that, she walked out of the room. I follow after her, but she's already hurrying down the hall. Up ahead, I see Jacob Blazing, the newly elected treasurer, leaning against the wall. He must have had his own meeting with Professor Gravener while we were occupied. So I'm going to go back here and save in this position. Um, I honestly don't think... Um, okay, hold on. Joint President C. There we go. Uh, I honestly don't think this option would do anything. Look at her. She's not going to answer this. So yeah, what's the matter? This is the best that we're going to get. But just in case. Minnie grabs him ar his arm and pulls him along with her. Leaning in close to speak, I can't hear the words, but I can tell from the tone that she's still angry, is, and he is trying to calm her down. I slow and fall back. I guess I'll talk to her later. After all, we have the whole year to discuss ahead of us. Alright, cool. Um, yes. I will end the episode here. So that was the presidency. Um, we managed to get a joint presidency. Um, you know what, actually? Before we finish this, um, no, 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 I don't think so. Um, yeah, no, I'm going to end the episode here. I was thinking of going back and seeing what the options for if you wanted to be um, the solo president, what would that would take, but I don't think I want to do that. Um, I know it might be a good idea, but I just don't want to do it. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and remember, teamwork is important. Take care, everyone.